So was that it? You know, that's kind of the question that everybody's asking themselves. Was that the extent of the correction? We're coming up into earnings. Tesla just reported after hours they're up. Regardless of whether or not earnings was actually good, it actually looked really bad, but the market is reacting positively towards it. Visa is up after hours as well. We have a slew of MAG7 names still reporting this week, so anything could happen. But the question is, was that the bottom? And this correction that everybody's kind of been going for, all pining for, bears have been shooting for, was that it? It feels kind of anticlimactic. You know, on Friday, we had made a video, on Sunday, actually, we made a, uh, a, the Markets and Focus video where we were talking about Market internals actually holding up on Friday. RSP or equated S&P 500 actually closed green on Friday. Stocks above the 50 and the 200-day moving average actually ticked up on Friday. So on the week, the queues last week closed 5% to the downside. SPY closed 3% to the downside. A lot of that were the mega cap stocks, particularly on Friday. The MAG7 stocks got hit hard and it brought the indexes with it. But the market internals actually were kind of holding up pretty well. As a matter of fact, energy and financials had a pretty okay week last week. So it wasn't just the indexes were crashing, everything was going down. No, it was mostly the MAG7 stocks, a lot of semiconductor stocks, right? Semiconductors got slaughtered last week, but semiconductors are not the entire market. It's part of the problem is when large weighted sectors such as tech now, the S&P 500 is 30% information technology. If you didn't know that, the Q is obviously more. But when tech does poorly, the S&P 500 is generally going to do poorly as well. So energy showing strength, financial showing, showing strength, both of those sectors combined do not equal the same weight as tech. So obviously, those don't counteract the tech drawdown, right? But the question here is, was that the bottom? And, you know, we went long. I'll show you a couple of trades that we went long. We kind of talked about this in the Markets and Focus video. But we went long, Charles Schwab, we went long, uh, Wells Fargo yesterday, and these are additions, right? At least with the Wells Fargo trade, we've added in to a new position going out. Uh, Q4 of 2024, financials are looking really, really good here right now. They continue to look really, really good. We still have energy exposure. By the way, we still have some tech exposure on the books from January, but those are free plays. We're not adding in anything here. And that's kind of what I want to go into, right? So we added into Wells Fargo. We bought the Charles Schwab play. We actually have a play on American Express as well. And if we go and we look at some of those plays really quick, they're doing pretty okay over the last few sessions, right? They're breaking out. They're continuing to move. Financials look really, really good right now. They are placing not only an absolute high based off of the last few weeks, but also a relative high against the S&P 500 going back a couple of quarters, right? So this is a pretty good look right now for financials. We're happy to be long. But once again, is this the bottom for tech? Is this the bottom for semiconductors? I don't think so. I'm happy to be wrong because we still have exposure to the long side through free contracts. And I want to add in. I want tech to outperform. But I just don't have enough information here to make that commitment to be going long and pumping cash into new positions for tech, particularly semiconductors. It kind of feels like there's still some stuff to resolve here to the downside. They're not really hitting off of any significant levels. The 200-day moving average is still very much underneath price. Price is extended way over it. Yes, we had a capitulation move on Friday that typically ushers in a dead cap bounce, which is a day or a few day relief rally to the upside before an extended move to the downside again. Once again, I would love to be wrong, guys. I have no real vested interest in the market coming down other than the fact that I want to buy these plays for cheaper. I am a bull this year until I'm proven wrong or until the market slips below 15 to 20% and starts breaking the 200-day moving average. I'm still firmly in the camp that we are in a primary uptrend second year bull market. And I would like to buy that magical circle down there. But if we don't ever get there, I'm going to be going back and doing the same thing that I've been doing over the last six months. And that's buying the strongest stocks at breakout levels. I'm okay with that as well. So I just want to point out that as I'm telling you guys this, I don't really have a bias either way for tech. I'm not vested with new capital in this space. So if it drops, I'm okay. If it doesn't, I'm okay. I would prefer it to just shoot off into the moon right now. Kind of just get right back on track that, you know, how it's been heading over the last six months. But there's just not enough here to convince me. I like the market internals. As a matter of fact, I'll show you that chart right now. By the way, if you're not actively subscribed to the newsletter, there will be a link in the description below. I highly encourage you to check it out because I send out a newsletter every day, sometimes two, depending on if there's a scan available or not with a trade idea. But yesterday's newsletter, we went through this. We talked about stocks in the 50-day high range, 200-day high range, and they both bottomed out and started to curl back to the upside. And today, they continued that. So there, I mean, there's enough evidence here to at least make the argument, could that be the bottom? It could. 
right? We're not just randomly saying it. More stocks have gone up than gone down over the last three sessions. Once again, another thing that adds into that market internal, that market breadth argument that maybe that was the bottom. But realistically, you know, until tech proves to me, and tech is the big boy in the market, 30% of the S&P 500, a majority of the queues, and we still have a bunch of names that are reporting this week, Microsoft, Meta, Google, you know, three of the MAG7 names still need to report this week. I'm not going to go and buy tech, right? Not yet. I'm okay being not the first one in the trade, but if the earnings, you know, get crushed and this market continues to pop down towards the areas where I expected them to come down and find support, I'm just going to be patient. The RSI is nice. I'm glad that the, the momentum has reset to the downside, but realistically, what I would love to see before I get long is an RSI above the 50 in most of the major indexes. Q's right now breaking to the upside, but not up and over the 50. S&P 500 breaking to the upside, but not up and over the 50. I really like to buy stocks that are trending upwards with RSI above the 50. It shows that bulls are in control. And then look at small caps rallying. We're almost back up and over 200 already. So once again, was that it? If that was it, that's awesome. I'm glad. I'm super stoked. I'm ready to get long again. If it's not, you know, I'm ready to sit on my laurels and wait. I don't think that that's the bottom, but if it is, hallelujah, we survived. And if you were short, I hope you made a bunch of money on Friday because that was pretty much the only day. That was your opportunity. Shorted six months. Hopefully you still had a couple bucks and Friday paid for it all. But also, I don't know if that's the bottom. So as of right now, majority of the newer positions that we put on are going to be energy and financials. We still have a couple of materials related plays that are free on the books. And we're very excited to get back long tech. We just don't know if this is the absolute best time to do it. We're constantly scanning for new setups. So once again, I encourage you, if you like the newsletter thing that I just showed you where I shoot out a newsletter every day, shoot out a scan every day with a potential trade idea, sign up for the newsletter. Link is in the description below. It's free. If you don't like it, just unsubscribe. That's totally fine. Reply back to an email and let me know if there's any way I can prove as well. I have added in some additions based off of responses. I'm just trying to provide as much value as I possibly can to you guys. That's my market update for Tuesday. That's answering the question, was that the bottom? I don't know. I kind of feel like a dead cat bounce, but we're long either way. I expect it to do whatever it wants to do. It's not up for me to decide what the market is going to do. It's just up for me to trade along with price. That's all I'm trying to do. Guys, my name is Hamilton here at The Trading Initiative. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. If you like our market research and are interested in joining along, links are in the description below. Click on that. We'll give you all the information as well. And I'll catch you in the next video.